Hey guys, so for this video, um, we drove to Missoula, Montana, which is just about a three hour drive um, away from where we are. It was Lauren's first big road trip in a while, not even really a big road trip, but first road trip in a while. Um, since he can't get up in his old bucket and his new bucket isn't ready yet, um, we do have a little system for how he lays in the car as safely as we can get him. Um, but yeah, we went to Missoula to meet with the urostomy surgeon from Seattle Children's Hospital, Hospital uh, to just kind of get a better understanding of the surgery that Lauren's going to be getting um, and get any questions we had answered. Get kind of a game plan. Yes, and we did get his permission to uh, use the audio from the appointment um, for this video. So. Yep. So that's what you guys will be listening to along. And then we got some good clips of the trip mm -hmm. um, from Missoula, Montana. So, so yeah. yeah, we hope you guys like it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, this is my wife, Sabia, and okay. nice I'm Lauren. <laughs> How have you been? I heard you had a lot of pain recently. Yeah, I've uh, been in the hospital pretty frequently. I'd say with have, kidney infections and have they isolated it down to kidney issues? Do you think um, is that what No, pain? it's it's nerve damage. It's okay. nerve pain. That's what it is. Do you have a good solution for that right now? No. They want, we're scheduled with one of the local neurologists to do an epidural as like a temporary nerve yeah. block. Um, and then we've been trying to find, because Benefis won't do like an actual nerve block. Yeah. Because their neurologists don't feel like adequate enough given Lauren's like circumstances. Yeah. So we've been trying to get in somewhere um, to get that done. We were hoping Harborview, but they won't take an outpatient. Okay. So, because they don't do outpatient pain management. Yeah. Yeah. So. so we've been trying to find somewhere that'll do an actual. So in between those times, have you also had some infection in the kidney that they had to treat? Yeah. Do you, is your pain worse than when you have that? Oh yeah. Okay. And is that pain similar to the chronic pain you have, or is it different? Um, it just adds on to the chronic pain that I have. Okay. So. In the same location or different location? The kind of uh, your chronic underlying. Well, let's so see. I get added pain in my backside, but it the chronic pain just worsens. It heightens to a ten. And are you on some medicine now to help with that? that um, I, I'm past my kidney infection at the moment, so okay. we're past How about the, for the pain, though? Do they have you on um, pain? Too much. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, they actually have me on the um, max dose that they can for everything. Okay. So we're I actually... I saw your list of medicines. It looked like somebody was really trying hard to get the right cocktail for you. Yeah, it's so, not you know, good. I, I, I'm always a realistic person. I think we have to kind of, what are the outcomes of, of you know, getting the tubes out? I think it'll, it will definitely decrease your risk of kidney infection. Oh, yeah. Uh, just getting the foreign body out. Mm -hmm. um, it may make you feel a little bit better because I think the tubes to your side probably aren't helping. Yes. With chronic stimulation and the pain on top of the infections. Yeah. Uh, just having that chronic irritation, poking the kidney probably is causing some discomfort. People that have those in a long time, they tolerate them, but it doesn't feel normal. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those are the benefits. Mm -hmm. And then also not having two bags, we can go to just one bag, which would be a little easier for you. Just um, so what's the, what's the, what's the blow, blowout rate yeah. on the bags? So, um, my biggest, yeah. like, question or kind of like, just to get it, beforehand readiness yeah. um like with with his colostomy bag sometimes if it fills up in his sleep we'll wake yeah. up and it'll be off of him and poop will be everywhere yeah with the urostomies is that just as probable or is it like more so, probable it, so overnight it's a little bit easier to manage because you've been hooked it up to a, a drainage bag oh okay that, right so the way that works it'll look very much like what you have right now mm -hmm. it's liquid filled instead mm -hmm. of stool filled so, you know, you make sure you have a good seal. Mm -hmm. It's gonna empty into the bag that you can then empty periodically during the daytime. If you wanted to at nighttime, you can hook it up to a bag, just like your nephrostomy tubes. Mm -hmm. And it'll hook right up to that and have continuous drainage. So it shouldn't have as high a risk of like overnight 
falling off and passing. And then with the with, with the use with now using my kidneys and my uh, ureter lines. Yeah. Um. Will it slow down the rate of flow? Like, since like I, you know, will it slow down the rate of um, how much liquid comes out? I guess it should be the same. Okay. Yeah. So think of it as your your kidneys are just making urine, irrespective of how the urine gets out of your body, mm -hmm. and that's how much really how much you drink. Drink. Um, they're gonna make all the extra fluid in your body into urine. Mm -hmm. So the way that empties won't change at all. So okay. it's just going to empty into the bag, but the urine output, you just take each of those and put them together. That's what you should expect to okay. learn from this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then once the nephrostomies are out mm -hmm. and those holes are healed up, that's when, because it's the nephrostomies that are preventing you from like submerging in water, right? Yeah, yeah. so we'll internalize everything. So kind of blow blood blow what I, I i was talking to sharon my nurse who's been i think in correspondence with everybody about having you out a little bit early i'd probably even put you in the hospital a day or two ahead of time because of your chronic infection just to pre-treat infection mm -hmm. and to get you to meet everybody since you're coming from out of town so have our anesthesia pain service come by and just say hi i would probably put an epidural in after your surgery to control your pain from the surgery itself so we don't have to use as much narcotic pain medicine. Mm -hmm. um, and like that, all kind of, you know, work out ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And then I want to redo your nephrostogram. So one of them has, I looked through all your x-rays that we've got now on our, on our system. One of them shows me that you're pretty long. I think it's the right side. The other side, they never, they're always doing spot checks to make sure the tubes are in the right spot, but they're not really showing me how long your ureter tube is. So one of them is really long on the right side, which is great. I want to make sure the left one's long just to give myself a really good kind of battle plan about how I'm going to hook up the plumbing on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, but what that would entail, we'll, 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 we'll clean out a little bit of your intestine, not a lot, because I, I think even though you had a, a lot of big surgery, you didn't have a lot of big abdominal surgery. Mm -hmm. In essence, you had a colostomy and they took out the bottom part of everything, but they left everything on the top part where I'm gonna borrow tissue pretty much alone, right? There's not a lot of, what they had, didn't have to resect a bunch of the hull. Mm -hmm. So I'll have a, I'm just gonna borrow a segment of that intestine and very close to where your colostomy is actually. And we'll just staple that back together again, which believe it or not feels great. Mm -hmm. um, and then that will be linked to the two tubes that are draining your kidneys. Mm -hmm. Like think of the kidney, uh, so if you, if you look at your current situation, you've got these two kidneys. I'm going to draw the picture and show it to you. Um, the kidneys look really healthy, actually. That's good. Yeah, on the, all your CT scans, your, the, the meat part of your kidney that actually makes the urine looks really good. Um, so <clears throat> these tubes drain like this, and then the frosted teeth are coming in just like this and kind of coiled up inside the kidney. I can see this too, but it's plenty long enough to do this operation. I just don't see, they don't fill this right. round about right here. Mm -hmm. Now there's ways around that where you actually hook the conduit up here and just run it over here and put the tube in and bring it up to the skin. Mm -hmm. It makes a really long conduit, which I would prefer not to do because I want it just to empty really mm -hmm. quick and not have a lot inside your body where it may collect urine and mm -hmm. cause infection, stone, all the long-term potential issues. But if this is down here and I can hear colostomies over here, isn't it? Yeah. So your colostomies here, I'd like to put this right here. And ideally we just hook these two tubes in right like this, like that. And then just bring this out as your second bag right here. And that will be your urostomy. So that's your in, new internal anatomy essentially, yeah. okay? okay. Uh, now, these nephrostomy tubes, I'll have internal tubes that I'll exchange this for. And I would plan to remove the nephrostomy tube pretty quickly after your surgery, meaning within five, six, seven days, I think. And we'll leave an internal stent. So the stent will go through this all the way up to the kidney, like this, mm -hmm. on both sides. And it'll drain into the bag down here initially. And I, I, we're going to leave that in for probably 10 days to two weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to plan on taking these guys out during that time to let those holes seal up. Okay. Because cool. those have been there for a long time now, and there's a, like yeah. a little fistula track. Now, the body's great about sealing holes up. Too good sometimes. <laughs> so, we'll pull those tubes out while you're kind of in the hospital getting antibiotics, and we have those internal drains to help it seal up. Mm -hmm. And then those we'll usually take out at about 10 days to two weeks after surgery. But we'll shoot an x ray to make sure everything's healed up fine. Does, things are does that stent, does the catheter that's up inside for 10 days, does uh -huh. that? Does that 
Is that uncomfortable at all? Or? So it's just like what you have pretty much. Okay. It's actually a little softer. The okay. frostbite tubes are a little stiff because they have to be stiff to, to get through your body. Yeah. And these are a little softer and so they don't cause as much discomfort. Okay. But think of that as temporary. That's not what we're going to leave them. Uh, yeah. Remember, we have to sew Still these. To, just... We have to sew these together right here. So this has to be sewed into the bowel. That has to heal. Okay. And so I want everything healed. Now you, I think you're in good shape for surgery. Your albumin's a little bit low from a nutrition standpoint, but I think you're okay. Your blood counts are a little bit low. You, we may need to give you some blood back after surgery. Okay. Um, because your, your, your hemoglobin of matter is a little bit lower yeah. than what I would have anticipated with you this far out from surgery. And that may just be, you know, iron stores, all the things that go yeah. along with that, nutrition, yeah. things like that. Yeah. So I, I, I would warn you that I'm, I'm for healing, having a good blood count is important. Yeah. So we may give you some blood just to help you feel better and to heal after surgery. Okay. Um, I don't expect to lose a bunch of blood, but um, again, we may lose a little bit and I don't want you down really low where you, it will affect healing yeah. or your well-being mm -hmm. okay so what's the um, like the average like heal process like time like, yeah so you're you're a end of one right yeah you're you're really unique sure. because of sure, what you've been sure. through so uh, normally when we do these kinds of operations we can get people out of a hospital in like five to seven days as soon as the bowel heals. Mm -hmm. So the limiting factor for healing and being in the hospital is, you know, going in and separating out any kind of scar tissue that might be there from your prior surgery, mm -hmm. barring that piece of intestine. So we're gonna take a segment that's about this long and then just take the other ends of that and put it right back together again. So that has to heal before you can eat. That's the first kind of limiting factor for recovery mm -hmm. is letting that kind of recover in your body. Then we'll start putting gas through your colostomy. We know it's time to feed you. We tend to do that pretty rapidly okay. uh, because we know today that if we stimulate the bowel early, this is going to heal well unless there's you know a more complicated operation technically. We know that usually heals in a day or two, and so we start actually giving you liquids pretty quickly as long as things are going okay. But the eating regular food is usually in the three to five day range. And again, that's always variable based on what's on the inside. It's a little less predictable. I think you're going to be okay as far as scar tissue, but there's always these so about, surprises. About four or five days of not eating. Yeah. Going with that expectation, if we get we there, if you get months. you there quicker, great. Now mm -hmm. we don't do artificial feeding unless you get beyond about ten days, where we just put a little IV in and give you some nutrition. Yeah. A special IV. It's called a pick catheter that goes in through your arm and yeah, your no. heart. I, I'm, I don't think we're going to need to do that but obviously those would be things that we can use if we need to help with healing right so that's the initial that's getting through you know infection risk of barring the piece of bowel that healing and then you get to the urinary tract reconstruction Sorry, that's that's it, which has to heal as well so um, where we plug that in uh, the, the tubes that drain the kidney that has to heal it's sewing two tubes into a great big tube mm. uh, that usually has a very good rate of healing and older people that say have had cancer this is an operation that's historically was devised for cancer mm -hmm. patients that didn't have a bladder um, but it tends to heal very well we let we keep it pretty wide open so it doesn't narrow but that would be one potential risk is to scar tissue. You've healed well for everything else. You're not somebody like, you have a lot of incisions that haven't healed with big bulky scars. So mm -hmm. we know you heal well. Mm -hmm. So that risk would be low. That's why we leave those temperate tubes around to let it heal around where we're sewing that together just to keep it open. Okay. And again, those tubes will pull them out somewhere around 10 to 14 days after serving. I know you guys are staying for a while afterwards. So we try to do all that before you head back home. Okay. Um, and then there's the skin. So we create this conduit, which tends, and you're thin in really heavy people, getting that through the tummy wall and through the muscle is a little bit more difficult because you have space and the blood supply to this little piece of intestine has to have no compromise. You're thin enough that I think getting that through your skin is not a big deal. So mm -hmm. our risk of having, you know, narrowing or kinking at the skin level or having it collapse or have the blood supply be impaired because of pinching through that long skin tunnel is pretty low, but that's the, right. uh, the other risk. And we make these what we call budded stomas. So your colostomy is probably relatively flush is that right? 
Is it flush or does it pooch yeah, out? I'm pooch though. Is it pooch? So this will look a little bit like that. It's called a budded stoma. We like that because the wafer fits around it better than yeah. it's flush. So yeah. we try to create that same kind of appearance. It's a little bit smaller because the, the small bowel is not as big as the colon, so it won't be as big. Okay. Uh, but it'll look pink just like your colostomy. Sweet. So, you know, that, and then we get you healed from all that. And then long term, we'd probably just do ultrasounds for surveillance to make sure there's no swelling in the kidney. I, we would probably do that yearly for the rest of your life. Okay. Um, there is risk of infection in that because it's a little piece of intestine that's, so I try to make it as small as I can for you because I don't want to sit any dwell time like a pond. Mm -hmm. I want it just coming out like a river because uh, mm -hmm. that lowers risk of urine sitting there that might cause infection either in the pouch or in the kidney long term. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not a perfect drainage system. Well, because it's a piece of bowel mm -hmm. um, and it's just a conduit but it beats having an nephrostomy tube in because it removes that risk yeah. of infection that's much higher and um, just the, increases and, mobility, yeah, increases and mobility the quality of life and, side, which yeah. I think is also those, those are equally important right now that you I think you recognize that mm -hmm. um, so th those are that's what that would look like I think Lauren mm -hmm. as far as so you know hospital stay I'd like to have you guys in in Seattle, you know, to be admitted probably two to three days before surgery, so I have time to get the X-ray done of your kidney again, the nephrostograms. I'd like to repeat them to get a little bit of better picture of the one two. Um, I want you to meet all of our team, and I want you to be on antibiotics for about a day or so, mm -hmm. preoperatively, just for um, clearing up infection. So we'd probably get some cultures done locally, or you could do it in town. If you guys are going to come into town and get settled beforehand, we could just have a clinic visit. I think Sharon was trying to set up a clinic visit just to make sure everything was okay before you got admitted okay. with me at Seattle Children's. Okay. okay, and then our anesthesiologist will probably contact you even before you come to the hospital. It's called a PASS clinic, and it's, uh, you know, any patient that's a little bit complicated, they like to know about ahead of time or review your chart, so they will probably be in touch with you by telephone or by phone mm -hmm. in a week or 10 days of surgery. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we have a big team. It's sort of like Harvard View. I've got fellows that, I, that train with me. I've got other partners, and I've got uh, some residents. They're all people that will help take care of you after surgery. You're unique enough. I'm going to be doing most of your operation uh, just because it's going to be a, like a little bit more challenging. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. so I'll be there for all of that. Part. Sure. But you'll have some people that will help me take care of you after surgery. I tend to like being in Montana and places like that. So I need mm -hmm. a lot of help around me to take care of all the patients mm -hmm. that leave behind when I'm out of town. So we'll have a whole care team that will help with that. And again, I, I would plan on an epidural staying in about three to four days um, mm -hmm. after surgery to help with pain control. Okay. Okay. We hope you guys liked the video. Um, make sure to uh, stop by the nerd shop at rikebros.com. We just put up our new designs. Yes, and we are still looking for the artist of that second merch contest winner. Um, we'll put it right up here. We are still looking for that artist. They haven't gotten a hold of us. We would really love to get a hold of whoever it was who got us that image so we can get that ball rolling side so, um so that you obviously know that you won um so that as well if you guys got any video ideas of what you'd like to see feel free to drop it in the comments down below but yeah we appreciate you guys have a good one